Yep, there he is. Oh, we got a few tadpoles. You never know what you find in the pond. But there's the guy I was looking for. Do you see him? That fellow right there lives from three to five years before he hatches. He's an important food source for almost all, all, all kinds of different fish. What that is, is a dragonfly larva. And I'll bet that if I make a mold out of him, that he'll catch all kinds of different things. Before we make a mold out of this, I want you to see how it swims. It doesn't wiggle. It doesn't flip or flop. It takes water in its mouth and shoots it out of its butt. And it's actually jet propelled. And it lasts for three to five years before it hatches. So fish see him a lot. And watch him go, look at him. See how he does that? We've clipped the legs off these dragonfly nets, cut some short pieces of thin wire, and I'm skewering the wire right through the central portion where his jet propulsion system is. And if you start from the back and just gently go forward, the little tube just will guide your wire right through. And I'm not really poking it, it's just following the natural little, little hole. And once I skewer them, made a mold box, punched holes on each side of it that are perfectly level. And then after I put these in position, I'm going to go ahead and pour the high strength 2 um, mold material over them. And uh, when that sets up, we'll be able to pour Alumisol and make perfect little dragonfly nymphs. Okay, our nymphs are all set up in the, in the mold box. We, we've mixed our mold material and I'm just very carefully oops, try to pour these without reorienting the insects. I'm going to pour a little material on each side. Quick get over here. These are going to look really cool. made our silicone rubber mold. We let it set up overnight and tomorrow morning cut little slits for our plastisol and we'll make some absolutely perfect little dragonfly nymphs. Everything is set up and uh, we're ready to pull our bugs out of the mold. I've washed all the bug juice out of here, and now what I'm doing is slitting this mold all the way from stem to stern so I can really open it up and there aren't any deep undercuts that I have to worry about missing when I pour my plastic. Of all the materials available to a lure maker, probably the most useful and most user friendly is Plastisol. This is virgin plastisol. It looks like milk. And I can cure it in either a microwave or on a burner, like an electric stove or a gas stove. In a microwave, 
you want to use a Pyrex container. I'm just going to dump out about that much. And I can now uh, add a softener to this, but I think I'm just going to run it straight for demonstration purposes. I've got my microwave set somewhere between medium and high. But no matter where you put it, you need to check it regularly to make sure it doesn't burn. Give it a little stir. I'm going to check my plastic. Now you'll notice You'll notice it's gotten clear, or a little bit clear, but check out the texture. It's like, like real thick honey on the inside, and it's getting a little liquid on the outside, and I'm just going to stir it up. It's getting close. When it's ready, it'll be real thin and real clear. I'll give her another ride in the microwave. See, it's getting even clearer, and it's still in the gelling stage. And it's important to note, it has to go through the gel stage before it's cured. So you have to wait till it gets thick like this, and then gets thin again, which it'll do in just a minute. See how liquid it's getting? Now, unlike the other uh, alumolite systems which are two-part. This is heat activated. Once you get it up to 350 degrees it actually activates and gets liquid like this after turning gel. And to cure all it has to do is get back down to room temperature. And then it can be remelted over and over again. But first it has to be activated by hitting the magic 350 mark without burning. I would say that most of this is activated, except for the stuff right on the edges. I want to make sure I get that stirred in, or I might get a little bit of a gooey worm, or minnow, or lizard, or whatever. This should be, oh yes, it's, this is all ready to go. Now smoking a little bit, that's an indicator. It's still liquid, it's nice and, nice and and thin. I think what I'm going to do is, just for illustration here, add a little bit of green dye. Just looking at this color and remembering what our Let's see how our bugs are doing. Let's pop this out. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> oh yes! I'm so excited. Look at this guy. Are you tell me? Remember that little dragonfly? <laughs> There's one. This is just going to be lethal. Put these on a little jig head so they're balanced. I mean a really light jig head, like a 32nd of an ounce. If I wanted to make them like super, super realistic, I could get some little skinny, skinny, little almost clear rubber bands and just thread them through here with a needle for legs. But I think that they'll be more stable, just like they are. They're the right color, they're the right size, they're exactly the 